Hello guys, I'm now coming towards the end of the 7 day challenge of using FreeBSD as my daily driver. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, I will go and watch them now and then come back to this video. So since part 1 and 2, I've installed the KDE desktop environment which I've really started to like. I've paired it with the Arc theme and icons and it just looks beautiful and FreeBSD has handled it with grace. I've also managed to get VirtualBox up and running without any issues by following the documentation provided by FreeBSD. I've tested with a couple of distributions and they've all performed kind of how you'd expect to be honest I haven't really suffered any issues there I've installed a few more applications along the way and just sort of in general how I would use a computer um, and it's it's done okay it's done pretty much every task so I started this challenge with a clear intention in mind I wanted to see how much I would have to change or adapt my workflow using FreeBSD full time now I know there's probably a lot of you out there that have been using FreeBSD for years and don't really consider seven days to be that much of a challenge but for me, for someone who's used Linux exclusively for, you know, since I can remember and don't really have any prior experience at all with FreeBSD, you know, I just sort of started doing it on the channel and I've just jumped straight in. It was a challenge. Um, there's certain things you get used to and a certain sort of way of doing things and sort of breaking that habit. It does, it, it sort of is a challenge and there is obstacles that you have to get over in a different way of doing things. But it was a challenge I enjoyed and I feel like I've sort of learned a lot from the other side and I, there's plenty more to learn and I'm going to keep FreeBSD on this machine here, this one here, um, just to sort of play around and tinker with it and it'll, it'll make an appearance on the channel every now and then. Um, so I've been using it for pretty much every computing task I have, you know, sort of emails, work stuff, documents, editing, images, videos, you name it. Um, and it's, it's, kept, it's kept up to date and I haven't really felt the need to or want to jump to a like a Linux distribution and, and do it differently. So let's talk about my experience over the seven days and, and what I think of FreeBSD as a whole. So I'll start with the bad and there will be a bit of crossover into the good as well because there'll be sort of a little contradiction um, but for a good reason. So the general process of installing FreeBSD I feel needs work. It's I know it's not supposed to be geared towards like beginners and new users but I think it could do with like a live installer or something like that. I know GhostBSD and FuryBSD, which I think is a new one based on FreeBSD, do have sort of a live installer for you and a desktop environment out of the box, which is probably a good way to go if you're not used to installing things with a, you know commands in the terminal or whatever. So this leads me on to hardware support. My wireless adapter didn't work for the entire seven days and I relied on using my Ethernet connection. Not a big deal for my desktop, but that would have been a deal breaker for my laptop. After the installation process was finished, I was greeted with the desktop of choice, GNOME. My graphics card wasn't supported out of the box, so I had to do a little bit of Googling and find the right packages to install and mess around with the conf. And we got there in the end, and it's sort of it's now up and running with both dual displays, um, and it's fine. Um, I've I had a little bit of screen tearing, at all, you know, it's the first day or two, but I've managed to overcome that. Um, I just sort of looked at some forums and saw what other people were doing this particular setup and I managed to get it just about right so I'm not really getting any screen tearing in any of the applications now so that's cool. My microphone worked out of the box I'll mention that in another video my camera uh, hasn't worked in any of the FreeBSD videos unfortunately um, so that was a little hurdle I had to try and get over there was no face cam for the majority of the challenge but that's all right right so next up is programs and packages and this will also be the one that has a bit of crossover into the bad um, good section of the video so for the most part I didn't have any trouble finding and installing most and I say most of the applications I would use on a regular basis I did run into a few notable exceptions of programs that weren't available and that did bother me and it would make it hard for me to switch today exclusively over to FreeBSD Another thing that isn't a deal breaker for me, but might deter new users from trying it out themselves, is the lack of a proper software center to browse and install packages. So when I installed the KDE environment, it also installed the Discover store, um, but it was, there was no backend for it to install packages from. Um, so I think if the desktop environments have got it there for you, surely there's an easier way to just plug it all in there and then you could just install your packages so that you can use GNOME software store or the Discover one for each desktop environment maybe I don't know I'm just throwing it out there another thing that might be a bit of concern to less experienced users out there when it comes to troubleshooting a problem is uh, because of the smaller 
user base compared to say like a mainstream Linux distribution, there are less places online for you to go and find support on a particular issue you might be facing. So you know, bear that in mind if you was to go and try this out yourself. So that's kind of it for the bad. For the most part, we, you know, it was good. It was a fun experience. So let's sort of talk about the good which I found. So the documentation provided by FreeBSD is concise and easy to follow. The first time I installed FreeBSD, I went into it completely blind, having never installed FreeBSD before. Um, so I just loaded up their website and it had sort of, you know, a clear indexed instructions of how to install it. And I think now after reading that a few times, I could probably do it without it. So here's the part that was also in the bad section. So though there are a few exceptions in specific cases, the packages that are available are relatively up to date and you'll find the FreeBSD supports most of what you would expect from a mainly mainstream Linux distribution. However, the notable exceptions that I mentioned earlier, which are why it's also in the bad, so there are you know a few key players there that you know without them I don't feel like I could fully transition over to using BSD. So you load like a native Steam and Discord and just a few other things like that that I couldn't really do without. But for the most part, I was you know for the operation of the channel and just sort of filming and editing videos, I was be I was able to install everything that I would usually use. So apart from the lack of a graphical software store, installing packages for me is a breeze. If you're like me and you rely on the terminal to install and manage most of your packages, you'll find the, the command process to install, it's, it's easy, it's just pkg install and then the name of your package. Um, and I don't really think it can get much simpler than that. pkg stands for package install and then the name of the package. Um, you know, if every time I sort of load a new distribution of Linux that I'm not that used to that uses a different package manager, I find myself having to learn and it's a longer process to learn but for FreeBSD installing the packages it's kind of second nature now I'll just roll it off and then you're good to go so very simple straightforward and haven't had to mess around with any third party repositories um, so as far as I'm aware most of the packages all come from a single centralized repository which means you know managing your packages is a much more secure process and finally the community I can only talk about my own personal experience but the general community around FreeBSD including its users and the people that work on it has been overwhelmingly positive See, I've been involved in my fair share of online communities over the years, and none has sort of made me feel as welcome as FreeBSD. So with that, I would like to thank everyone who's took the time to comment on the videos and social media posts, sent me emails and direct messages, and shared and just everything. All of you have made this challenge worthwhile. Even the BSD veterans that have been patient and pointed me towards bits and pieces that have helped me along the challenge. Um, so with that said, my closing thoughts. I think FreeBSD is a a brilliant operating system with bags of potential for someone like me. I stress someone like me because we're all different and we all expect different things from our computers. For some people it's all work, work, work and they just want a stable OS that gets out of the way. For me I need to get my work done but once the work is done I want my operating system to be fun and a joy to use. Um, FreeBSD has certainly been a joy to use and it serves many people very well. For me though FreeBSD isn't quite ready to be a drop-in replacement for Linux. It's close and maybe one day it will be there but for me the overall lack of gaming support prevents me from using this full time. Though the challenge is over this isn't the last time you'll see FreeBSD on the channel. If you've subscribed during this period I'll have plenty of more videos for you in the future. So thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.